Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is Barbara coming to you from the United Church in Denby, Ontario, which is part of the Denby Matawatch and Shoot Pastoral Charge. And I'm so glad to be with you for a few moments as we share in a time of worship. So we come into God's presence. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we pray the Holy Spirit be with us during this time as always. Amen. Just a couple of things before I get started. As we're coming up to the end of this month and moving into September and talking about church openings, um, Emmanuel uh, may possibly open sometime mid-September depending on when the region gets back to us. St. Andrews is working on their plan to remediate some of the mold issues as well as creating a plan. And uh, St. Luke's in Denby is still working on a plan or having a meeting. So for those of you who attend church at St. Luke's, please watch your inbox or wait for that phone call for a rescheduled meeting. But always keeping in mind that when we gather two or three, that Christ is in our midst. That's a given, it's a guarantee, it's always. So whether we're in a building, we're outside, or in the safety and security of our own homes, Christ is with us. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture is taken from one of Paul's letter, letters to the people in Rome. So I'm looking at Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And it's entitled, New Life in Christ. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, Ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. May the hearing of these scriptures bring us new insights from the Holy Spirit today. Amen. So here's Paul writing, and it, it does seem to get a little wordy, doesn't it? It's kind of like Paul. Um, whether there's a case where he's trying to be colorful or poetic or the writers who are writing down what he's saying get mumbled up. But there's a couple of key points that I, I'd like us to look at. One is our gifts and the other is transformation. So those are our two words for today, the gifts and transformation. First of all, um, Romans was written to the people in Rome, but not to just the diaspora, not just to just, just the people who have moved out of the area where Christ was. So he's writing to everyone in Rome. He has no actual experience of Rome at that time, but he's writing to them. 
So that's a little bit of background. I'm not sure it really helps me to understand this passage specifically, but maybe it's helpful for you. I have a, a couple of sources that I looked at this week, and one is Matthew Henry's commentary, and he is quoted here. We receive from the Lord every day the fruits of his mercy. Let us render ourselves all that we are, all that we have, all that we can do. And after all of that, what return is it for such very rich receivings? Wow. So basically what he's saying is that we have these gifts. We present ourselves as sacrifices, as living sacrifices. And we have these gifts, whether it's teaching or preaching or being a prophet or ministering, being an exhorter, somebody who lifts others up, being givers, giving generously, being leaders and being compassionate and cheerful people. Those are all gifts of the Spirit. Those are all gifts that we have in proportion to need and to proportion to God's grace in each one of us. I recognize a few of my gifts and I'm thankful. I have some gifts stronger than others. And I'm not talking specifically about talents because talents are a little different. Talents are what you do with your gifts. So I have the gift of exhortation and I can encourage and lift people up, but the talent that I might use to do that will be the tone of my voice, um, the training and the skills that I've learned over the years. In ministry, the talents I have could be in speaking, but also in music. Music is its own ministry, but not everybody's musical, not everyone is a leader, not everyone is a preacher, not everyone is a prophet. Keeping in mind that a prophet is one who speaks for those who cannot speak. A prophet is one who speaks the truth in love. But we need each of those within the church. We need each of those gifts to create the whole. So we're back to the body of Christ. So Paul's moved away from talking about feet and hands and eyes and ears and heart and brain to the spiritual gifts that each one of us has and can bring. Because if we didn't have someone in our faith community who could be the generous giver, if we didn't have people who were compassionate and loving, but only people who could lead, then we'd be a little off balance. Not everybody is called to the ministry in the way that I am, but we are all called by Christ. We are all called. From Wesley's notes, he says this, the gifts are various, but grace is one. Many gifts, the act of grace, the gifts that are given to each of us freely, that's what grace is, come from one, from the divine. So I had a few questions in mind for us, and I wondered, how do we see ourselves? How do I see myself? How do you see yourself as part of the body of Christ with those gifts? Hmm. And 
do we even recognize what those gifts are? Sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it's more about the gifts that other people see in you. And then it's up to them to be the exhorter, to be the encourager, to help lift you up. If there hadn't been somebody in my life that encouraged me, I would never have continued my studies in music. If I hadn't had someone to encourage me into ministry of word, I might not be here today. We need encouragers. Do you recognize yourself as an encourager? One who exhorts others. Do you see yourself as a teacher? I know we have many retired teachers among us. But just like ministers never retire, I don't believe teachers ever truly retire. I have the gift of teaching. I have patience and kindness. I've worked with a lot of students, both on keyboards and voice and in theory. Although never in the classroom and I pray right now for all of those teachers going into classrooms during this time. But retired teachers never stop, right? You're always helping someone to see a different viewpoint. You're, you're walking with your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren and helping them. And we teach each other, don't we? I believe we do. And if we are part of this body and we come to a good sense of which gifts are ours, how do we use those gifts for the continuation of the church as a whole? The continued work that we do as a community of faith. That's where, for me, the word transformation comes in. Because if we sit on our gifts and we do nothing with them, there is little to no transformation. There's no growth. There's no change. But as we use our gifts for the good of the church, the good of the people, for the good of one another, we ourselves are transformed. It's like Grinch's heart that all of a sudden becomes so big it can, can't be contained in his body any further. When we use our gifts, our attitudes can change. Our life view can change. And we become better. We become more of what God would have us be. Transformation. But if we stop using our gifts, will the church continue to grow? Now, I'm not talking about people attending church. I'm talking about the change that happens when we look to God. The change that happens when we give to one another our time. We share our food. We share other resources. We're transformed as we teach one another new and different ways. And we share in dialogue. That's grace. These gifts of Christ that have come to us, that once we recognized, we can no longer ignore. Once we recognize those gifts, then it's up to each one of us to do something. The body of Christ is alive. Whether we're in four walls, whether we're outside, 
in the parking lot or whether we're in our homes, as I mentioned earlier. The church is alive and well. May God bless you with the insight and the discernment to see your gifts so that you can be transformed as you share those gifts with one another. Amen. So the, the song that came to my mind, and I thought we'd just kind of sing along a little bit. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. There was a, a verse that wasn't in the text as I found it. But we're not going to hide our light under the bushel. Right? We're not going to do that. We are going to let our lights shine. Because if we don't, what good is that light? Using our gifts through the Spirit, we change or we are transformed. What's next for you? How will you change your little corner of the world? Your community? Your family? Let's be at peace as we transform our lives in Christ. Amen. We still have many in our congregations that are in need of prayer. We pray for those who have been through surgeries and are healing, for those who are recovering, some with long roads ahead. We pray for those who are in care, in seniors' residences, feeling maybe isolated, we pray for those who are undergoing tests and waiting results, knowing that that time can be difficult and unnerving. We pray for all the schools and the teachers as, as they head back in new and, and in different ways. And we pray for all the support staff who will become frontline we pray for all those children who, in their excitement, have learned to deal with face masks and change. May they grow to be stronger than those of us who have not had to go through such dramatic changes in our childhood. We continue to pray for safety on the roads during this holiday time, knowing that we have a holiday weekend coming up. For our front line, our emergency services, for the police, paramedics, the fire crews, may we all find safety and awareness. And may we give thanks to the God who's given us so much this day and always. I give thanks and prayer for each one of you who have joined in this Sabbath moment with me and have supported myself and the congregations through this difficult change and time of transition. Dare I say transformation. But we lift all these prayers and all of those that are heavy on our hearts and those prayers of joy of celebration. We lift them up to you, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. And we pray, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, I would just like to thank you all for your continued support of these congregations, not only in your prayer and in your phone calls to one another, but also through your gift to the churches in monetary ways. Um, if you're still unsure how to go about doing that, please contact your church treasurer and may your gift be a blessing to all, as always. Thank you. Accept these are gifts, O oh God, in this time as always. Amen. So a couple of blessings I'm going to share with you. Um, my eldest daughter was married last weekend in a backyard wedding with face masks and 30, 32 degree temperatures. It was really hot. And we were so, the family was so thankful to be there to support them. And then we had a a socially distanced dinner at a place just down the road from where they lived. Wonderfully catered meal, the staff were wonderful. Such love in the room. And I give thanks for that, that was a blessing. The uh, garden is growing, if anyone needs zucchini or cucumbers, I have extra. So just let me know. I have some on a table out by the, the car in the carport. So if you want a zucchini, come and get it. It's there. And I'm sure there's many blessings from each one of you. So I lift all those blessings up to the God who created us. It's been a long summer for some and a short summer for others. But there is time where grace abounds. So we sing together a, fami a familiar and much loved hymn, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my I fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through Uh... 
The Lord has promised good to me and to you. God's grace is sufficient for all of our needs as long as life endures. May this day bring you blessings. May this night bring you rest. And may you be the light that shines in somebody's world through Christ Jesus. Go in peace to love and to serve. Amen. And we sing together. We are one as we walk this road together. We are one as we journey side by side. We are one. Even though we may be different, we are one. We are one. And everyone who gathered said, Amen. And Amen. May God bless and keep you till we meet again. Do, 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 do,